Is big time burning a hole in new players' pockets, or is it still potentially profitable? Because there's so many things to factor, new players could be losing money and not even realize it. We have a few days before the second leaderboard event starts, so is it a good time to start? In this video, you'll get a rundown of how much big time I'm earning an hour, a trick that I do to save on hourglass time, a cost-effective strategy for farming the big time crypto, GM, GM to all the new faces and returning strategists. Before we unpack the latest on maximizing profits for new players, quick disclaimer, I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. You can lose money with crypto and NFTs. Also, crypto world moves fast. My approach to crypto and gaming opportunities, especially big time, is typically short term riding the hype and then exiting early. Always double check the latest updates before making any decisions. Now, let's get started. My last video was the ultimate guide to preseason earnings, diving into the diverse ways that players are making money in big time. Link in the description below. It was a deep dive, but here's a quick recap for newcomers. Big time's an MMORPG where you can earn crypto and NFTs, sell them on the marketplace, or withdraw the crypto and sell it on an exchange for money. It's free to play, but to get access, you're going to need an invite code. The easiest way is just to go to the big time discord and head to the big time media section. This is where people post their codes. Follow me on Twitter at Jeff Lissario because I'll be giving away extra codes that I get there. Now to answer the burning question, how do players earn big time crypto? The secret lies in a utility item called the hourglass. When equipped, it unlocks the potential for big time crypto to drop during dungeon raids. Higher rarity hourglasses boost higher potential, but come with a price. You only start with one free hourglass slot, you want more, you're gonna have to shell out time crystals. That's the game's premium currency. Think of hourglasses as similar to time charge batteries. Once depleted, you're either gonna recharge them or buy new ones. For most newbies, the marketplace is your go-to for these hourglasses as creating and charging them with in-game assets is currently super expensive. So the safer thing to do is to buy them off the marketplace. Previously, we crunched the numbers on buying, renting versus just getting charged hourglasses and TLDR. Buying charged hourglasses seems the most flexible considering the unknowns about player demand, sustainability, and potential upcoming game balance tweaks that the big time team can make. If I were starting out now, any strategy that's slow to break even feels risky. Sure, there's room for potential trades in buying and renting, but just comes with higher risk. So the outdated strategy that I recommended was skip renting and outright buying and instead buy five common hourglasses from the marketplace. You're looking for long charge, which is gonna be around 2,160 minutes, and then you're gonna use time crystals to unlock additional slots. But you're gonna save the hourglasses specifically for prestige portals, the premium dungeons with boosted drop rates. For newer players, one thing that I recommended was just to consider playing for free first, level up to 30 plus, and then watch how the first airdrop shakes up the in-game economy and big times price before diving in with your wallet. The upcoming airdrop will release about 373,563 tokens into the market. Historically, such influxes dip prices if buying pressure can't keep up. So keep monitoring and decide if it's worth your time and money to jump in at that point when things start to stabilize. So that's the gist of the old strategy and now you're caught up, but the game has evolved since then. So let's go over some of the updates and things that I've been learning. In refining our big time strategy, I've delved deep into the data and this not only meant rewatching my recorded runs, but also was painstakingly going through and manually crunching the numbers into Excel to find insights and focus on the most effective farming sessions that I had. We had a full party of six focusing on efficient farming techniques. But remember, these findings are from my own experience. Your mileage may vary. So take this with a grain of salt. We're going to look at two significant factors that stood out, potential big time farmed an hour and overall costs. Initially, based on inputs from high-level players and before recent drop rates adjustments, I estimated an earning of 100 big time per hour. However, diving deeper into the data and testing, 
this is a different picture now. I'm seeing an average of around 60 to 70 big time per hour. This includes time spent hunting for prestige portals and not just spending time inside dungeons. I soon realized that wearing five common hourglasses the entire dungeon run was super inefficient. Too much time was spent on travel or spent on low drop monsters. So here's a trick I've adopted to maximize my hourglass efficiency. First, only equip hourglasses in the boss room or in areas with a higher drop rate, like the trap doors inside tomb dungeons, where you encounter a group of elite monsters, and usually the tougher the monster, the higher the drop rate. Following this approach, I still average around 60 big time an hour, but use significantly less hourglass time. And I compared this to other party members who were using their common hourglasses the full time, and I'm only slightly behind them in terms of big time earned. And to deplete an hour of hourglass time, I have to roughly play about six hours. This translates to roughly an average of 179 big time per hourglass hour used. While this strategy does cut down on hourglass time, it does increase actual play time. In refining our financial model, we've added crucial elements that were previously overlooked. The expense of acquiring or renting out NFT cosmetics for prestige portal requirements. These portals have dynamic NFT requirements and introduced a significant variable into the equation and was one thing that I didn't dive deep into the previous video. So with grouping up with a lot of random players and also tracking a lot of the portal requirements, here is a breakdown of what I found. The bare minimum requirement is equipping two common NFTs, but this is extremely rare. For most groups, however, they're going to require a little bit more. A combination of three uncommons plus two marked cosmetics that are tagged either origin, craftable, or preseason. A cost-effective setup to meet these criteria includes an uncommon origin one-handed weapon, typically costing around $3, an uncommon craftable shield priced around $35, a uncommon origin title, usually costing around $3, and then two craftable armor pieces, just any other slots that you can fill, each estimated around $8, adding up to a total of $16, which brings the total for outright purchasing these items to about $57. But renting these items can be more wallet friendly and can be around about $20 per month. However, the marketplace is so frustrating and it's a pain because the interface sucks. That's the only way that I can describe it. So be prepared to be annoyed. When renting, you're likely going to split the cost between two sets. What I found was one rental with five to six common craftables. And then the second rental was for three uncommons. One thing you want to make sure is that there's no overlap in the equipment slots, ensuring that you can at least meet the bare minimum requirements for each group that you're farming with. And on a personal note, I've been repeatedly kicked out of farming groups simply because I didn't have the right NFTs at the time. So let every group know up front which NFTs you have and if it's going to work for that party. Let's update our farming strategy for big time, focusing on the potential risks and rewards. Remember, your results could vary depending on a variety of factors like big time's token price, game balance updates, and your own personal gameplay effectiveness. So here's a detailed breakdown of the startup costs. We're basing this on my optimized stats. This requires five long charge hourglasses, each ideally with 2,160 minutes costing around $51 each. You're farming in a full party of six and clearing about 3.6 dungeons per hour. So here are the additional details. So you'll be paying about 255 for the hourglasses, 249 and 97 cents for the time crystal packs. This covers the estimated 30,414 crystals that are needed to unlock the slots and also for the portal costs. This is going to be about $60 for the NFT cosmetics. I'm overestimating for caution, which leads us to a startup cost of about $564.97. Because there's a variety of different factors to look at, let's look at different profit and loss scenarios, analyzing earnings versus big time price. So we're going to explore the different big time earn per hour and the various big time prices so that you can see how it potentially affects profit and loss. So in the bear case, if if you're earning 60 big time an hour at 22 cents per big time, your profit would be negative $89.77. At 17 cents, it drops down to 
negative 197 and 77 cents and at 13 cents you're looking at a loss of 284 and 17 cents at the base case you're upping the earnings to 100 big time an hour the potential profit changes significantly with big time at 22 cents you could see a profit of 227 and 3 cents at 17 it goes down to 47 and 3 cents and at 13 cents there is a potential loss of $96.97. Which brings us to the ideal optimized case. So in this most favorable scenario, we'll be earning around 179 big time per hour. Your profit at 22 cents per big time would be $852.71. At 17 cents, it's a healthy $530.51. And even at the lower price of 13 cents, you could still net $272.75. So looking at these numbers, it unveils the not so secret formula to your success. Your hourly earnings is intertwined with the ever changing market value of big times price. So these are your twin engines powering your potential profitability. But reaching those profit levels is going to be a test of endurance and time management. You're looking at a solid 216 hours estimated to fully utilize all your hourglasses. So in practical terms, that's about 54 days if you allocate four hours each day or 27 days if you're doing a more intensive eight hour day, which is a full time job. That's a significant slice of your time for the month. Future Jeff here. And one thing that I forgot to mention was that if you're going to be playing a lot, you have a chance at qualifying for the next leaderboard airdrop. If you're a newer player and you're not crafting, you're most likely going to hit the lowest tier of 3000 big time. And that current big time price at 22 cents, that's going to be about 660 dollars but let's go on the lower end just to forecast if big time were to hit its lowest range at this point which was about 13 cents so at 13 cents that is going to be about 390 dollars so that is another wrinkle that potentially changes profit and loss as well but remember to stay cautious and adaptable and always be prepared for potential market shifts. It brings us to the crucial question for new players. Is the potential financial gain worth the substantial investment of your time? Let me know in the comments below. I'm also tinkering in the data lab on more breakdowns, so subscribe so you don't miss that. If you enjoyed this video and you wanted to see why I started playing big time again, even though early access was one of the reasons why I quit blockchain games previously, check out this video 